What is going on, everybody? My name is Zella Prince, and welcome back to yet another reaction video. Now, today I got another SCP video for you guys. This is SCP SCP 4051, your friendly neighborhood leader. Now, this sounded interesting because we've never actually had a, as far as I can remember, Keter that didn't want to destroy the world, or one that just consistently well, just tried to destroy the world. But today we're going to go ahead and react to this because this popped up a while ago and I just been pushing it further and further and further back on my uh, list of videos to react to because I wanted to get uh, the more recent ones. Because I, I post SCP videos all the time, so I try and switch it up between SCP and something else completely different between every single reaction video I do. So... Yeah, this video kept getting post pushed back for a while, but now we're going to finally react to it. So, with that said, react to Go. The Ethics Committee is one of the SCP Foundation's most important and overlooked divisions. The small secretive group keeps a close eye on the Foundation to ensure that all decisions made and all actions taken are for the betterment of humanity and not just in service of needless sadism and cruelty. The Ethics yeah. Committee consists of a small group of people in comparison to the gargantuan that is the Foundation as a whole. It's only natural that every so often something slips under their radar, and when it does, it usually results in complete and utter disaster. Usually. In the case of SCP-4051, that's, that's is a male humanoid with a unique ability to open wormholes to extra-dimensional spaces. And huh. in terms of disaster, well, let's just say we hope you have a pretty tight grip on that red SCP expert coffee mug of yours. The I have a ruby. I have a ruby mug. I'll drink to that. Wormholes that SCP-4051 opens are essentially spaces filled with infinite copies of a single item, which SCP-4051 really? can reach in and pull out. Assuming they're small enough, that is. The Foundation's strict experimentation schedule has provided a lot of important data on how SCP-4051's anomaly functions. Controlled testing showed SCP-4051 was able to manifest small, simple objects, like a net, sugar pills, or drinking water. But he's also claimed or reported to have manifested many other things, like aluminum baseball bats, duct tape, and more. At one point, SCP-4051 was allowed to use these abilities to assist with the site, but the Ethics Committee recently halted this. Bye. Seems like a simple enough anomaly, but with the Foundation... We yeah, the, know, with that tiny early explanation, it makes it seem like it's a simple and easygoing, or say, anomaly, but I'm sure there's much more to it because we're only a minute and 40 seconds into it never is. So let's go back. Let's start at the very beginning. The Foundation first became aware of SCP-4051 when YouTube videos surfaced online of a vigilante in an American city using wormholes to fight criminals. The videos got over 2 million views before the Foundation became aware in August 2012 and stepped in, taking it down and investigating what had led to it. A mobile task force was dispatched to retrieve the individual using the wormholes and brought SCP-4051 back to Site-17. The first interview with SCP-4051 began on a bad note. SCP-4051 was handcuffed behind a pane of glass when Dr. Arthur Roswell began to speak to him. Dr. Roswell introduced himself and confirmed that SCP-4051's name was Rainer Miller. After being Andrew assured Miller. of his safety, SCP-4051 calmed down a little and stopped struggling with the handcuffs. At Dr. Roswell's request, SCP-4051 began to explain the details of his anomalous power. He affirmed that he could make small objects appear out of thin air, and that he tried to use these abilities to help people. At first, he'd intermittently interrupt carjackings and robberies, subduing the criminal. But with a new criminal syndicate moving in, the crime rate skyrocketed, requiring Rainer to patrol much more regularly. During these acts of heroism... So he just wanted to basically do the right thing, but the SCP Foundation interrupted so he can't do these things. I suppose there's some dangers towards his uh, powers. Guys, if you can just pull infinite objects out of a wormhole, what's... That you can't bring a normal nuclear nuclear warhead portal and just drop it and just run. I guess that's one possible reason why the SCP Foundation contained uh, contained them. I wonder if they're gonna br sum that up what I just said in this video. Several witnesses saw Rainer's powers, though he tried to keep them quiet. His request for the Foundation to intervene with the criminal situation was acknowledged, 
as Rainer volunteered any and all information he had, stating that he just wanted to help the Foundation. Roswell thanked him for his enthusiasm. It didn't take long for the Foundation to move to experimenting with Rainer's powers, as the Foundation often does. At yeah. first, they started slow. Dr. Edwards. Dr. Roswell and his colleague, Dr. Edwards, asked Rainer to manifest a few small items, a metal cube, a bottle of bleach, and something of his choice. He was able to produce the cube without any trouble, and the object of his choice wound up being a framed picture of his mother. When he tried to take the bleach out, he seemed upset, but managed to do it. With the experiment a success, SCP-4021 was escorted back to his containment chamber. All the way there, he repeatedly asked how long this testing phase would take before he would be let go. The staff didn't have an answer for him. In the next test, Rainer was asked by Roswell and Edwards to produce a copy of War and Peace and a phone. Both were peace. produced, but the book was filled with gibberish and the phone was entirely hollow. The researchers concluded that the anomaly is based on how well SCP-4051 understands the object being manifested, and mused about requesting something that didn't exist. Rainer still asked all the researchers how- So what, does he have to actually picture the object in his mind for it, him to reach the little wormhole and grab these things? ...how his family was, and whether he would have any friends at the Foundation between tests. The questions were, once again, ignored by the staff. In the third experiment, Roswell and Edwards asked Rainer to produce objects that didn't exist, a circular square, a color, and so on. But SCP-4051 wanted to know about his family and when he would be able to go home before he would try to manifest anything. Roswell assured him that once the Foundation had a solid grip on his ability, he would be allowed to go home. Questions about his family revealed that his mother believed he was away visiting colleges. He demanded to speak to his mother before any other experiments, and Roswell affirmed that he'd asked the O5s for approval when the experiment in question was finished. Rainer agreed and began the experiment trying to produce the impossible items. What came out were cognito hazards, oh, severely damaged the mental state of anyone trying to perceive them. Half the research team instantly collapsed, and security guards subdued Rainer to take him back to his cell. The testing chamber was cleaned, and Dr. Edwards wrote that the value of SCP-4051's anomaly was too great to let him sit in a box unused. He called for a special pediatric therapist and authorized further experiments on Rainer. But in his own containment cell, Rainer was still knocked out after the test had gone wrong. The cameras watched on as he woke up and began curling up and away from them toward the other side of the room, then standing up a few minutes later. He had manifested many small pieces of body armor and glued them to his body. The guards were distracted with escorting Roswell and Edwards from the testing chamber and didn't realize anything was wrong until Rainer manifested a small bomb and blew his door open, leaving his cell. Other security guards immediately turned and responded, trying to subdue Damn. SCP-4 with non-lethal weapons. Eventually, a few were able to overpower and incapacitate Rainer and move him back to his cell. The day after the containment breach, Site-17's director Thomas Graham sent out an open letter to all staff assigned to SCP-4051. Rainer had been moved to a more secure containment unit, but everyone agrees that it would be better in the long run if SCP-4051 is working for the Foundation rather than against it, especially with regards to amnestics. Sourcing yeah. Y909, a chemical used in amnestics, was dangerous and expensive for the Foundation. I've heard Y909 in a long time. It's been a very long time since I watched the SCP-3000 video. Very long time. Foundation. But if Rainer's abilities could be harnessed to produce amnestics easily, then he would be all the more valuable to them as a friend rather than a foe. The Ethics Committee also require that SCP-4051 do so voluntarily for the Foundation, rather than being forced to produce amnestics against his will. To that, Dr. Edwards was promoted to SCP-4051's project director on the basis that he would try to ensure Rainer would be totally and utterly loyal to the Foundation, using- Wait, what happened to the other doctor, the original doctor that was doing the testing on- Whatever means necessary. He already set up a schedule, using punishments and rewards, along with regular checkups from an on-site therapist. The therapy sessions began on a good note. Dr. Yesenia, the therapist assigned to SCP-4051, introduced herself politely, and Rainer seemed to take a shine to her. They discussed his unique anomaly and the containment breach incident. Yesenia was kind and understood the psychological toll containment had on people. She asked why he wanted to escape, and he explained he just wanted to see his family. 
He was close with his mother since his father had walked down on them when Rainer was just a boy. They had been supporting each other since, and he missed her a lot. That said, he explained he wasn't opposed to living at the Foundation. They could help him actually understand his powers, and he didn't mind being a part of tests if he knew he was helping people. He just wanted to see his family again. Yesenia's after-meeting notes said that the containment effort should be focused on assuring Raynor that the Foundation had his best interests in mind. The next set of experiments were a little more abstract. Dr. Edwards alone was overseeing them, and the first experiment included another individual, a D-Class. The plan was to see if the D-Class could also pull things out of the portals, or if only SCP-4051 was able to interact with his portals. Actually, a good question. The D-Class was scared of Rainer, but after some urging by Dr. Edwards, he managed to touch the sides of the portals and reach in and pull out a stone. Rainer was only anomalous in his ability to manifest the portals, so Edwards' plan was to cut out the middleman and to perform research on SCP-4051's brain to see if they could successfully devise an artificial method of creating the portals. The experiment after that was to see the bounds and geographies of the pocket dimensions that Rainer generated. A GPS tracking chip was thrown into one of the portals SCP-4051 made, specifically the portal leading to portraits of his mother. The portal shut, then Rainer was asked to recreate it. The researchers checked to see if they could still get a solid signal from the tracking chip, and they did, albeit almost a thousand kilometers away. The results oh. were filed away, but Edwards noticed one thing. The portrait of SCP-4051's mother was slightly different. It seemed that he was forgetting what she looked like. The next therapy appointment with Dr. Yuzenia covered how Rainer felt about that experiment. He was excited that they were actually performing research about the anomaly that he wasn't capable of just telling them, that they were now finding out something interesting about his powers. Yuzenia asked if he had any requests for tests, but he doubted that Edwards would listen to anything he said. The doctor seemed to dislike Rainer for some reason he couldn't figure out, but he knew best on what to test and how. Meanwhile, Edwards had come up with something that could utilize SCP- I mean, I understand why he would not like Edwards. He's using him, and he's not letting him see his family. And it, I guess he's also, he is also a kid, too, so it would make a lot of sense. P4051's abilities in a useful way for the project of synthesizing amnestics. Procedure 350 Promethean. The details of this clandestine project are murky and secretive, but the goal was to see if they could use Rainer as a live method of synthesizing Y909 through an experimental surgical procedure. Several contingencies were planned. If the wormhole became too dangerous or Rainer tried to resist, he'd be automatically injected with paralytics and sent back to his cell. The project wasn't immediately approved, though. The Ethics Committee sent one of their most skilled liaisons, Jeremiah Cimmerian, to conduct the approval process. He interviewed Dr. Edwards, ascertaining that the man was sane and able to conduct the procedure, that any unethical actions that were outside of the scope of the proposal would result in his removal from the team and <coughs> disciplinary action. Moreover, he revealed that he knew that Dr. Roswell, SCP-4051's original researcher, was Edwards' brother, and that he oh. had been permanently injured in the incident when Rayner was asked to manifest impossible objects. Edwards swore that he wouldn't take any needless actions to cause intentional pain and suffering, and that everything he would do would be in service of the Foundation's goals. With that, Procedure 350 Promethean was approved. Meanwhile, Dr. Roswell's condition wasn't improving. He had been put into worse. an induced coma by medical personnel due to his extensive exposure to the cognito hazards. He wasn't expected to recover anytime soon. After the Ethics Committee approved the procedure, Dr. Edwards stopped conducting usual experiments. The very next test involving SCP-4051 was the first implementation of Procedure 350 Promethean, but it failed. Rayner broke the restraints on the chair during the painful procedure, and Edwards considered tranquilizing him, but decided against it. We needed a wake, he said. The next therapy session, though, Rayner didn't so much as mention the procedure. Instead, he greeted Dr. Yesnia, explaining that he wasn't doing so well. He had talked back to a guard, and they had taken his desk away as punishment, and he felt like it was his own fault. Dr. Yesenia was worried and offered to see if she could get the desk back, but he declined the offer, saying he'd just try to be better. After this session, Yesenia felt annoyed, not by Rainer, but by Edwards. He had been saying that the subject was getting resentful and rude, but Rainer still seemed like a sweet, helpful child. His, uh, what do you call it, fights with...
his fights with Dr. Edwards is turning um, him into from being a nice person into a man who's just trying to protect him. Angered. But it's coming down to. The next time Procedure 350 Promethean was enacted, it was the first time Edwards actually managed to successfully complete it. SCP-4051 was actually being compliant with the procedure, making the job a lot easier for the surgical staff. The results and details of it, however, were still unclear. In the therapy session after that, Rayner told Dr. Yesenia that he had been having terrible, terrible dreams every night. Nightmares that stopped him from sleeping. He worried that people would treat him like a freak, not because of his anomaly, but because of what happened with his father. Dr. Yuzenia encouraged him to tell her. She already knew, but felt it would be good if he let it out, and he shared his memory of how his father had locked him in a closet and abused him, burning him with bleach. That's oh, that happened. explains why he was, wasn't happy when he was forced told to bring in the bleach earlier on. That would make sense. He'd been upset when asked to take a bottle of bleach in the first test. His nightmares were about not being able to escape something that was coming toward him and that his father could still be out there. But Yesenia admitted to him that while she shouldn't be telling him, his father had been found by the Foundation. He was serving a life sentence in an Arkansas prison for murder. Rainer grew quiet for a moment before changing the subject. Yesenia's observations were optimistic, and she believed his mental health was improving, and that he was now fitting into his role at the Foundation, though she wondered how Edward's experiments with him were going. The next implementation of Procedure 350 Promethean went poorly. Edwards hey. wrote in his diary angrily afterwards that Rayner didn't even remember Roswell or recognize his name. How he was angry that he was assigned to the anomaly that had nearly killed his brother. He had an outburst during the experiment, oh. and it was shut down. It's not just him experimenting him, it's him also getting revenge on him for what he did to his brother. Beginning. Down early, but only a week after, another attempt was made. While the procedure was being done, Rayner asked about Roswell, but was cut off. The research team knew that if he was told what he had done to Dr. Roswell, his mental health would crater and negatively affect the project. In spite of that, the procedure was a success, and Edwards took credit for the whole thing. They were getting closer to being able to completely make use of SCP-4051's anomaly. In his next therapy session, Rayner recounted how he liked being out and about in nature, and how the containment cell had become a suffocating prison. Yesenia suggested she might be able to swing a treadmill in this room to keep him active if she bothered her superiors, but he didn't want her to get in trouble. He seemed worried and upset. He voiced that he didn't think these experiments were helping people anymore, that he was being a burden. Yesenia had an burden. idea. She could ask the director to allow Rayner to help out around the site, fixing little things and helping clean things up. It wasn't much, but it would allow him some activity and boost his morale about helping people, all while making use of his anomaly. Rayner was excited. He loved the idea and had been scared about being stuck in a cell uselessly. After the session, Yesenia reflected that it seemed cruel to manipulate SCP-4051 into wanting to help the Foundation when he so obviously already wants to help. And just like she said, it didn't take long for the director to authorize a security clearance for SCP-4051. Hmm. Just enough to be outside his cell when accompanied, to help with site maintenance. While Rayner was off fixing things around the site, Yesenia decided to do some digging and asked for information about the experiments Edwards was conducting, but didn't have a high enough clearance. Meanwhile, yeah. Edwards had come up with a prototype for a machine that can mimic SCP-4051's abilities. A few weeks after it was approved, Site-17 had a minor containment breach, and a few hostile anomalies overran armed personnel. Rayner was present at the time and used his wormholes to terminate the anomalies before containment was re-established. Even though he saved lives, Yesenia was forced to reprimand him for using his powers without authorization, and he was banned from any maintenance for two months. Damn. Several months later, the machine to mimic Rayner's powers, 350 Janus, isn't working correctly and keeps producing the wrong object. Yesenia keeps requesting information on Edwards' experiments, but is denied every time. Even when she asks the Ethics Committee for a review on the project, the machine worked, but only once, breaking right after. SCP-4051 story is a strange one. It involved an MTF mission sent into a dangerous area to contain an object, with Rayner sent along with them. The full mission log has yet to be declassified, and maybe we'll cover it in a future video. But for yeah. now, let's just say something went wrong during that mission. 
The Foundation discovered something new and dangerous about SCP-4051's powers, and a closer eye fell upon the project. The Ethics Committee re-evaluated what had gone on with SCP-4051, and the site director surrendered information that Edwards' experiments hadn't been all in the name of science, that he might have been needlessly cruel and violent to an innocent anomaly just because he wanted revenge for the accidental mutilation of his brother. After taking a closer look, the Ethics M. Committee came to the decision that SCP-4051 needed to be rethought. Large portions of the document were redacted and classified, and they tried to bury the project. SCP-4051's powers were too dangerous to allow about the site. His permissions were revoked, and he was Damn. placed into permanent containment in a more specialized cell. The researchers of the Foundation need oversight. Otherwise, you get incidents like SCP-4051, where a vengeful doctor subjected an otherwise innocent being to brutal surgical experiments and manipulation under the guise of research. It goes to show that the Foundation isn't always the good guy. In fact, from the perspective of the anomalies, the Foundation can be pretty damn evil. Yeah. Now go check out SCP-4999, someone to watch- Yeah, that took a turn I was not at all expecting. At least the entirety of it all. I thought it was just going to be like a monster that ended up becoming like cat like and like friendly towards people, but also had like the cat like attitude, like back off. I don't want to be pet anymore. Or I don't want to be touched. Play with you, play anymore. That's what that's that's what I was kind of expecting. I wasn't expecting it to be like a human being with anomalous powers. That wasn't at all, at all what I was expecting. But um, hopefully they make another SCP 4051 video in the future because I will definitely react to it. Uh, just to get the continuation of what we, they were just saying at the end. So I'll keep my eyes open for that in the future for when that video ever comes out. That being said, guys, hopefully today's reaction video. Subscribe all that stuff, guys, and I will see you next reaction video. Bye-bye.